Hello, I'm Kathy with a K here in Honolulu, sometime radio broadcaster, and this is Hawaii POV. Daniel J is originally from San Francisco. Got introduced to the club scene or disco scene via your sister. My neighbors down the block, they were just moved from New York. I had befriended them, the brother and the older sister. They told me about this disco. It was an underage disco called the Down and Under. My mother, she was actually pretty free about letting me do whatever I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. It was hard to control. She was also a dancer too, so she related to it. She would go dancing every weekend at the Alibaba in Oakland, mm -hmm. which was like a spring-loaded dance floor, and had true a big band playing there mm -hmm. live. It was her scene, and so she allowed me to go check out my scene, basically, at 11 years old. Before I even went to the disco, I was like, had a connection with the Tower Records down the block from my house. And I was always raiding their 45 collection, maybe stealing a few. I had a friend who was the security guard. But anyway, so she let me go to this disco, which was the change of my life. Luckily, my sister knew the owner. And so the owner took me under his wing and said, OK, you can come in. Mm -hmm. And there was a famous DJ, Dr. Don Rose, on KFRC. And I ended up going, getting a job there very young and answering phones. So I was totally tuned in to the radio biz and like wanted to be a DJ, a radio DJ. Anything that's been in my life that I've been pretty good at is it never like seemed like work to me. Mm -hmm. And so those are all the things that I always try to gravitate to, things that make me happy and fun to do for a yeah. living, you know. And DJing is definitely one of them, you know. So on radio or off radio, more I'm more comfortable in a nightclub because that's what I've done all my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what was the name of your mix show on I-94 back in the day? The host of the show was Sean Tildon Sweeney. Okay, okay. It, it went on at 12, from 12 to 2 at night, late at night. Mm -hmm. I made it on a reel to reel. Nice. Yeah, so nice. It, was, it was all made on so reel to reel. So the way you edit is razor blades <laughs> and wax pencils. Absolutely, but yeah. most of my stuff was one take. I didn't have to go edit too much. A little bit of splicing, but not much. Yeah. It didn't have really a name. It was sponsored by Jellies. Okay. And uh, the reason I got the show in the first place was Sheriff Norm. Did you always go by uh, DJ Daniel J? Yeah, yeah. I went in with this idea to the program director with fully sponsored. Like I came in and said, oh, yo, yeah, yeah. I got money. <laughs> yeah. Put me on the air. Right, I got right. money. I'm going to pay for my slot. Mm -hmm. What DJ t tells you they don't want any money and you're going to pay for your well, slot? Well, when we first start <laughs> out, we g have these ideas. I'll right. do it for free. <laughs> right. No, oh. so bad. <laughs> There was this famous DJ in New York that I modeled my show after, and his name was DJ Red Alert. So I wanted to show, throw a show just like his, a hip-hop dance show with freestyle and bass beats and breaks. Mm -hmm. Some of the music was the format I-994, the, basically the freestyle stuff like Trenere and mm -hmm. Expose and all that stuff. I started this mix show, and it got crazy ratings. We definitely got listeners, mm -hmm. and it was amazing. I started a hip-hop group. I joined. I was in a hip-hop group for a while while I had the radio show. We were first called the Hawaiian Bubba Crew. We ended up changing our names to the Princes of Percussion, P.O.P. We had a human beatbox, backup singers, mm -hmm. CJ, and he's still around. He was like the intelligent rapper, like, you know, Chuck D, Doc Rock, the Puerto Rican speed rapper at that point. He was the fast rapper of the group. Morris was the very serious and he wanted to produce, so he was producing beats and stuff. And oh my God, ACE, Articulate Creator of Energy, Keone, was the most amazing beatbox ever. And we had two backup singers and a full reggae band at one point, the Lions Crew. And we had a famous song, Be My Naughty Girl, was our hit. You know, There's one yeah. person I didn't mention in this group who is instrumental, and his name is James Coles. He was totally in the hip hop. And I was the alternative DJ with a hip hop show. He got his radio start doing this mix show doing with me oh and then God. he ended up taking over taking my job god damn it <laughs> but I, I loved him always had a lot of respect and we ended up he ended up playing at my first house mm. parties the love club yes which a bunch of other djs did and that was the start of the house scene which turned into the rave scene and chapel of love which was his event mm -hmm. and love club which was my event and everything grew up people like felix sean and lionel were my dancers and djs and kalani too and there was a whole bunch of members and it all it was a culture that grew mm -hmm. And at the same time, there was an underground rock culture and band culture starting, you know, and there was a lot of bands coming up. Kind of the punk scene was peering its head. And then Radio Free, bam. So when you were at KIKI, that was the mid to latter 80s? Yeah, 87, 88, okay. 89. And then... That makes show lasted for a long time. And past what, what I started with, and I went, ended up going to KWXX, and I did a different radio show, mixed show, 
that was more alternative. There was already the hip hop show and I signed off on it, so I started this show on KWXX. Tiny Tadani, and there's another guy who was actually the DJ of my show, he ended up being on the news, I forget his name. Late 80s, around 88, 1988. So concurrent to that, you were working in Waikiki. A uh, like famous club called The Wave, Waikiki, and Hula's, the gay club, um, under the banyan tree, one of the most beautiful nightclubs in Waikiki mm -hmm. ever. Yeah, I was playing multi-formats, and high-energy music was to the gay scene and video mixing, mm -hmm. which was very, very new. There were, actually was a famous video editor that uh, Jack Log imported. Who owns Wake, owns. Wake, Wake Key and Hula's, yeah, both yeah. of them. I skipped over to the Pink Cadillac. They had a famous night called Ladies' Night there on Thursday night and they would have literally a theater line around the corner. So Pink Cadillac, and right, right as I moved there, the reason I left is they were opening a larger place called the Pink's Garage. I was very excited about helping build this new place. It was a larger venue mm -hmm. than the Wave or Pink Cadillac. It was going to be the first proper warehouse, like European-style club. That was because one of the owners, developers of it, was uh, Peter Bergstrom. He was from Sweden, so he had a very, very direct idea what he thought it should be. Of course, George Camacho was the administrator and deal maker for the club. And then you add me, which I'm the, kind of like the wild card. I, you know. It was decided though that you'd be the house DJ? Well, Peter was a DJ too, so he wanted all positions. Yes. So I was under him. I had already been throwing parties and having a following with my love club and my other events mm -hmm. that I, I brought something to the table when I came. I brought a following of people that knew me and, mm -hmm. and followed what I was doing already. I was having parties where I could get three, 400 people to already. Peter didn't really have that following of local clientele because I'd been here so much longer than him yeah. beyond that, you know. Off and on since the age of six. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Mixture of all of our visions together and then all of our connections. Mm -hmm. We started to make things happen. It turned the corner for the club scene of Hawaii and for the music scene of Hawaii and it created a whole bunch of different sectors, mm -hmm. people that came out. You so Radio Free opened in 91, so it was probably on the air about six months or seven months. Late 91 or early 92 that the Pink Garage opened. Peter wanted to do a live broadcast on your station, approached the station. Sheriff Norm was like, oh, can't be able to tech now. I think that's partially when I stepped in and said, well, we'll play whatever people vote for. Mm -hmm. And we'll have a basket and people make requests and I'll have a variety of music, which was perfectly up my alley because that's all I did at The Wave and, and a lot of venues I played at, especially Pink Cadillac uh, Ladies Night because I didn't really play hip hop at the garage, but I totally played hip hop at Pink Cadillac when I crossed over. It was a totally different format than The Wave. So I was already doing that format of mixing rock and hip hop and house music, you know, techno and all those different genres of music. It's the way it should be, I really think. I think that the one music club is going to end up killing itself sooner or later. Or just playing pop music, too. I'm not, I'm not down for that, hearing the same 10 songs when I listen to the radio and the same 10 songs when I go to the club, you know. So it has to have that underground element and all those underground elements of hip-hop, underground elements of house music, under, underground elements of whatever is bumping up and drum and bass and all of those things. If you put it all together and also rock music, rock music has got a lot of dance music in it. So that's what Dance with Democracy really was. And it was amazing for a DJ because most DJs that would get the same damn time request. Dance with Democracy, you wanted to make your request special or different. So there was a wide range of music coming and things that you would not have, you would maybe wouldn't, you got stumped that night, but you'd bring next week because you heard it and said, oh, so Dance for Democracy, it went with the Radio Free Hawaii balloting system, voting for the songs you wanted to hear and suggesting songs that you didn't want to hear. It was live from 10 p.m. till midnight, I think. And DJ Daniel J was the live DJ spinning the music. Uh, Dave O'Day was the talent. Right. He was the main the MC. talent. Sometimes it would uh, switch. Oh, power, yeah. Right? You, all, you all come down there. And it's that's awesome. how Daniel came into work as a regular DJ eventually on Radio Free Hawaii, 1027 KDEO in beautiful Waipahu. It was the catalyst for so many things, including, like I said, Pink's Garage. If it wasn't for the advertising, being, having Radio Free to advertise on and to work with what they were realizing was happening is, is there's so many people here that have a wide range of musical tastes. Having everyone's input and having like a really cool set of people have everyone's input 
And then all of them coming to the same place and camaraderie with each other created a culture totally different. There was the circle dancers, the goths, and it was all, all levels, and they all got along, you know, very few little fights there. It was cool, as long as the, as the music kept rotating. Reminds me of your full moon parties. First they started in Maui. 92, 93, okay. so it wasn't really related to Radio Free, but we kind of all connected, started throwing full moon parties over in Maui. Well, I'm going to throw some full moon parties over here in Oahu. We went to Diamond Head. Mm. Kids that couldn't go to clubs to came. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not going to downplay the idea that there wasn't drug use mm -hmm. or people smoking weed. And... But I'm also saying <laughs> it wasn't necessarily the thrust of it. No, it was, it was really about yeah. people and the music and dancing and being out mm -hmm. in nature and all those things were super prevalent in it. But people were high too. Yeah. So, you know, it was at the, it was, at, it was it, when I first started throwing rave parties in general. I was ecstatic because we were building a culture and mm -hmm. a community. At the end of when I was started throwing the parties and they were super successful at like the After Dark and the Groove, whereas almost every other week I was having a party and I was getting a thousand people to mm -hmm. two thousand people, which is unheard of in Hawaii. No party here right now is getting a thousand to two thousand yeah. people. I started crying after my events. I used to go home and ball. That satisfying feeling of building a culture and community, I started to see these kids not dancing and sitting on a curb all wasted. I kept throwing parties for kids after that. And that's when I started throwing adult house parties at Indigo up. And Indigo yeah. was a restaurant bar on Uwanu. Parties there in the Cannon Club. In the early 90s, when you said 93, 94 in Lahaina on Maui, he did Dance for Democracy on Friday nights from Pink's Garage. KDEO had a strong signal upcountry Maui in Lahaina. Yeah. And that's when Casanova's in Makawao. <laughs> yeah. Great Italian food. I'd started throwing parties up there mm -hmm. previously just one-offs. Dance for Democracy was super popular at that mm -hmm. time and so I did approach yeah. Stefano and Steven, the managers, and I fell in love with Maui at that time, you know, be embarrassed if I don't mention them about it. But uh, b basically Billy and Scott, were they were brothers and they were really organized, knew everybody, mm -hmm. and they were the, really the catalyst for it also getting started. There's something about the way you, you put together music. Music yeah. is telling a story and making a roller coaster ride of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. So it was the way I learned. I was taught by some of the best DJs. Favorite hero of a DJ it was more about energy and turning things down really low and capturing the crowd and also telling a story sometimes with the words of the track, sometimes with the music of the tracks, just being pretty or being tackling it emotionally rather than just technically. Because there's some really good technical DJs out there, but they're so robotic about mm -hmm. it, doesn't carry over like you want, at least I want it to. Right. Are there DJs you really enjoyed being on the lineup with them or when you would throw a party, be like, oh, it'd be great to have these people to just kind of mix it up? You and G-Spot did, did a lot of uh, parties together. You know, he was a good promoter mm -hmm. and definitely into creating a promotion machine. So he was really good at that part mm -hmm. of it. I was good at production and like doing the art Mm -hmm. and hiring artists and coming up with a theme mm -hmm. and sometimes I would spend too much money and he'd be going oh no don't spend that money <laughs> you know, it's about this what makes yeah. them all get excited yeah. about coming is I, mean, I hate to say it's so cliche it wasn't about the money but it really wasn't for me mm -hmm. it was about throwing the best darn party I mean literally throwing parties I was 14 15 years old mm -hmm. I was part of a group called Luomo I was a model at that time we were doing model shoots for the flyers mm -hmm. and having fashion shows at the parties and I would ramp model and I would DJ. Mm -hmm. These parties were super successful in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. It's always been in my blood to throw mm -hmm. these parties. It was always so fun and mm -hmm. damn it made money too. When I came to Hawaii, house music was in its infancy. People knew about it even like very little in the Bay Area it was mm -hmm. just getting started. It was here and me and this English guy both loved it and we said well let's just throw a party. We don't care if 10 people show yeah. up. <laughs> and so hey Get out of here. Yeah, so that's always kind of been my, my crux of throwing parties is let's have some fun and let's do things that we've never, you've never seen in a nightclub before. Giant flats of art, crazy props, invite 200 people to get in for mm -hmm. free and all club kids, as mm -hmm. long as you dress up like a club kid, you got mm -hmm. in for free. And, and that created a whole little mini culture, the mm -hmm. club kid culture, you know. Gay scene kids that weren't 21 yet mm -hmm. had a place to go. And they'd be on stage flaunting it and 
dance in it. And, you know, I think that created a lot of careers for a lot of those mm -hmm. kids or a lot of uh, confidence for those kids rather than hiding and not having anything mm -hmm. to, an avenue to express themselves. So it was very exciting. It was also integrating the hip hop kids, the house kids, the young gay scene, mm -hmm. and all of them intermingling and all getting along and being like, multi-formatted and live bands too you know that was it was for me it was important to have all the elements fungus which is now quadraphonics yeah kind of got their start out of that um, i had a recording studio at that time too so i was into recording bands and making music and producing music other than house music and electronic dance music yeah it was great red session me and the rich who was the manager for red session mm -hmm. we produced collaborative cd that Actually, it was pushed pretty heavily by Radio Free Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Got nominated for the first time for a Hoku for wow. Hawaii for the rock category. Mm -hmm. It was called This Ain't No Blank 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 yeah. Blue Owl, but we lost. Oh. <laughs> but it was a collaboration of a lo 20, like 20 local bands yeah. from all kinds of different genres of music. Punk to ska, acid jazz mm -hmm. and everything. So, But I digress. Where the rave scene kind of grew up in the 90s. Four to 96 era. By 90, 96, 97, I gave up on all of it and I moved to Maui. You know, I'd fell in love with Pinky Passion. So we had a little house and we were making house. The music sucked me back in. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things you had mentioned was finding some place to actually be, like a club. The Groove, know? which was in its, it was called Nimitz Hall, it was called The Groove, it was called The After Dark. Yeah. And yeah. you know, before that it was Pink's Garage. After The Groove, we took over a rock climbing facility over on a sand island called Climber's mm -hmm. Paradise. Matt Grimm okay. had a club around the corner from there, which was actually my old recording studio. Matt Grimm had a lot to do with the underground club scene. Very ballsy guy. He kept opening up places, 1739. Mm -hmm. You know, he had the dungeon out by the airport mm -hmm. and the old Kodak building right across from where Pink's Garage was. He oh, actually, actually had three places there. Yeah, the old Kodak building was right. a, like maybe a couple of blocks. It was only away. really a block away. And Euphoria. You're still playing music. Yeah, played all over Asia. We just played in Tokyo, Hong Kong, and Thailand, and Phuket. Well, I have a 10-year-old son that kind of holds me yeah. down a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, my life's changed. Things that excite me have changed, too. I love this format called Ghetto Funk, which is, uh, it's been up and coming for quite a while, but it, it, it incorporates classic soul, rock, R&B, and hip-hop mixed with new beats, new mm -hmm. electronic beats. They seem to dig it, and I love playing it, so it's really cool to have a venue to play that kind of style of music. So, you know. How do you find music? SoundCloud, I follow an immense amount of producers. And you're They're, still doing mixes, too. Yeah, I'm, and yeah. I'm on SoundCloud, DJ Daniel J. For the guy who says, love, 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 like this, and for <laughs> 10,000 people. I make an immense amount of mixes, put out 20, 25 mixes a year. I do them in fours. I'll make a house mix, I'll make a get a funk mix, I'll make a glitch mix, I'll make a mm -hmm. bass mix, or a trap mix, or an electronic reggae mix. And I call it the Quafecta where I actually collect four genres of music, mm -hmm. and then I'll make all the mixes like, pretty much all at once, like within a week or so of each other, and put them all down. One take, no edits. Like I make yeah. a mistake, you're hearing it, you know, it's li all live kind when of When you have a host a party, do you play the mixes or do you DJ? No, no, we have DJs. Sunday we're having a Soulgasm barbecue, and the DJs are playing a Soulgasm and be here. It's Matt Key's birthday. Happy birthday, Matt Key. A very, very famous DJ from Chicago is going to be here. Joshua Is from Is and Diz. So I'll be spinning and I'll be cooking. It's at my house, <laughs> the supper club. Super relaxed, eating good food and dancing. And I could bring my designated driverness. There you go. <laughs> good talent. That, that's a good talent to bring to the table.